his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Can we put that into action? We're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. We give you glory. We thank you, God. Hallelujah to your name. We bless you today, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. We're going to set this atmosphere as we prepare to go before the Lord. Hallelujah. He's mighty. He's good. He's answered prayers. He's made ways. He's kept us another week. Watched over us as we traveled over the dangerous highways. Nobody but God. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. And tell God thank you. Come on, tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Hallelujah. And your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we'll command our souls to bless you today. Hallelujah. We'll command our hands to clap. Hallelujah. And we'll command our voices to give you praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank him today. He's good. Hallelujah. And he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in here? Is he worthy? Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. We bless him today. We bless him today. Hallelujah. There's nobody like God. Hallelujah. This morning, we're going to have opening prayer followed by scripture by Sister Alea Haskins and Brother Tyrone Davis. Then we'll have the welcome, and then we'll be in the hands of Sister Alea Haskins and Olivia Smith for our testimony service. Amen. We want God to have his way. Amen. And we don't have to leave here the same way we came. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have opening prayer, and I'm going to ask if everyone would stand, those that can, and we're going to be in the hands of Sister Jessica for opening prayer. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to come into your house once again, God. Thank you, Lord, for how you've kept us throughout this entire week, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you blessed us, you touched us, God. You gave us another chance, God, another chance to draw closer to you, another chance to tell you yes, God. Oh, God, we thank you that you are in this house, God. Oh, we thank you, God, that you are here and you are ready, God, to meet every need, God. And we thank you, God, for helping us, God, to tap into your presence, God. Oh, God, and to leave changed, to leave healed, delivered, and set free, God. We thank you for moving by your spirit, by your power, and your might in this place on today, God. Oh, God, we ask that you would touch everything, God, that is done, God. Let it go forth to your glory, to your honor, God. Touch the man servant that will bring your word, God. Oh, God, we thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy, God. We thank you, God, for having your way in this place, God. Oh, God, in my faith, God, we declare miracles, signs, and wonders, healing and deliverance, and setting the captive of free, free on today, God. And we thank you, God, for moving in this place. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. For the wage of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6 and 23. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. John 3 verse 16.
made the law a saint. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And the Bible declares that whatsoever we ask, when we pray, we believe, and we shall receive it. So I, we stand to welcome you to our youth day service, to welcome you to the house of the Lord, where if you brought any burdens, any cares, any trials, you can cast it all on Jesus. You are welcome to get your peace. You are welcome to get your deliverance. You are welcome to get your prayers answered on today. You are welcome to experience the power in the presence of the Lord. You are welcome in God's house. Give God glory and honor for all of the testimonies that went up before him. All the glory, the honor, the praises all day. They belong to God. They belong to God. All the glory, the honor, the praises all day. One more time, all the glory, the honor, and the praises all day. They belong to, to our God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, if you know the glory goes to him, if you know the honor is his, and if you know the praise belongs to him, come on, let's open up our mouths. Who wouldn't serve a God like ours? He's the only true and living God who can step down and touch our soul's diseases. Nobody but Jesus. Come on, give him glory in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God, there's nobody like him. There's nobody like him. And we've been too quiet today. For our great God deserves a great praise. Hallelujah, and it ain't praise until you open your mouth. Hey, 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 it ain't praise until you open your mouth and give him glory with the fruit of your lips. Come on, we can take 30 seconds. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And if you don't know what to say, just tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we thank you, God. Yeah, God, you answer prayers. And we thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, hey, glory to God. We give him glory today. It's not ours, but it's his. Hey, glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a miracle-working God. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I was contemplating on whether to say this or not, but one of the young babies we've been praying for on our prayer list, my God, hallelujah. The baby ended up being back in the hospital. Hey, I not on my seat. I'm on shit. Woo! Oh God. Hey, hey. Two weeks ago, she had to go back into the hospital with a virus. Oh my God, my God, my God. And the mother reached out and said, "I need some prayer." Because it had gotten so bad, they wanted to transfer the baby to New Orleans. Hallelujah, because they said they couldn't, they needed to send her down to a specialist, somebody that could help her better than what they were doing. Hallelujah. But I know the real doctor. <laughs> Woo! My God, my God. Yet I don't see God. Oh, God. And she said the doctors had given them two hours to make the decision. 
on whether they were going to let them take the baby to New Orleans. Hallelujah. She needed a quick answer. She needed a quick turnaround. And I want you to know in a matter of hours, God turned it around. Hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. He turned it around and he stabilized that baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they had her on a paralytic. Hallelujah. She couldn't move. <laughs> And they had her on the vent. <laughs> hey, she couldn't breathe. Hey. Oh. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And the doctors had told the mother to settle in because they said it was going to be a while. <laughs> but we continued to pray. <laughs> and I want you to know that she didn't follow the steps that they thought she was going to follow. Hallelujah, but they advanced that baby and took her off that ventilator. Hallelujah, and they downgraded her. And I want you to know she's still in the hospital, but I know God going to bring her out. Yet I'm a sheep, and I give God glory today. Hey, I give him glory. I give him glory. I give him glory. He's a great deliverer. Hallelujah. He's a great deliverer. He's a great healer. He's a great mind regulator. He had a Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. At this time, hallelujah, we're going to have a selection by um, Sister Skylar Haskins, Sister Olivia Smith, and Sister Alaya Haskins. Pray for them as they come. Amen. And they're coming with a song that says, I'm not lucky, I'm loved.
Hallelujah. Come on and let's give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear your hands clapping. Now come on and open up your mouth and you just begin to talk to God. Hallelujah. And take a few minutes and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Just right where you are, give him your sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. We got a few minutes where you can talk to God for yourself. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we lift your name up on high. You are a great God. You are a mighty God. Hallelujah. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. 
and come on and open up your mouth and make the devil out of a liar. Hallelujah. Out of all that God has done for you, hallelujah, we ought to tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for being God. Oh, God, we give you glory today, God, for who you are, not just for what you do, but for who you are. Oh, God, you see everything. You know everything. You are in control of everything. Oh, God, and we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us today to come in your house, give you worship, give you praise. Oh, God, now we know that it's preaching time. God, I can't preach without you. Let me say only what you want me to say, how you want me to say it. God, let the word go forth with clarity and conviction. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Come on and give God the best praise you can give him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. As you remain standing, let's go quickly to the word of God on this morning. Coming from Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1, I ask that you pray with me as we go forth in the word. Hallelujah. And we pray that God gives us what we need on this morning. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. If you have it, say amen. The word of the Lord reads, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, Let's in at any time we should let them slip. Amen. The word of God is blessed. You may be seated in the presence of God today. We're going to preach from the thought. I can't let it slip. I can't let it slip. We're going to preach from the sub thought. And I want you to tell yourself to get a grip. Get a grip on this word. Get a grip on God. Get a grip on sanctification and holiness get a grip on the things of God now we live in, in a time now where the saints didn't got comfortable Amen. we didn't got comfortable and that same comfort it now leads us to be reserved it leads us to be complacent it leads us to be a little bit loose and it leads us to be satisfied we satisfied with just coming to church on Sunday. We forget about church Monday through Saturday. We come to church excited about the next praise break, but we forget about that. We have to live a life after we get through praising God. We come to church on Sunday. We be excited about everything that God has done for us. But the devil, he's still waiting on us as soon as we leave this building. And so today, Amos 6 and 1 says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. We as the people of God have to be determined that we can't let the things of God slip. Remember where you were when God found you. Remember how dirty you was. Remember how lost in sin you was. Remember how hard it you had to fight to, to lay hold on the word of God, to, to go forth in the things of God. We can't, we've worked too hard to let the gospel slip. We work too hard to let our praise slip, our faith slip, our salvation slip. So this morning, we got to make up in our mind that I'm determined to fight for what I worked hard to get. I worked hard to come out of sin. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Some of the stuff I had to let go, I ain't going to sit here and tell you that it was easy for me to stop. Can I preach up in here? I was going to church and still doing some dirty stuff. Can I preach to y'all up in here? But one day, God delivered me. God saved me. God set me free. And you mean to tell me that I'm going to let a devil cause me to let go of what I worked so hard to get? The Bible says that we should give the most, more earnest heed. That means we, we got to have a serious intent or intentional state of mind. And heed means that I need to be paying attention. I need to take notice of what the devil is trying to do. What does this mean to us? That means we as the people of God, we need to be more concerned. We need to be more convicted. We need to play 
close attention. First Peter 5 and 8, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And we can't afford to let our guards down. We can't afford to relax, because the one moment we say, it don't take all of that praising, it don't take all of that shouting, it don't take all of that dancing, it don't take all of that praying, it don't take all of that fasting, one time ain't going to hurt. The one time we try to figure it out on our own, that's when it'll cause us to slip and this is how people backslide this is how people leave God and fall back in the old habits that God delivered them from because the Bible tells us to not give place to the devil and once you let go of your grip and you begin to slip then the devil got you in his territory so the devil only needs an inch to get you outside of the will of God and we can't let all of the fasting and the praying and the consecrating and the studying of God's word, all that we've done just to let the devil cause us to forget who God is and let this word slip. But the devil is a liar because we know who God is. We know what God's word says. We know what God has done for us. And sometimes we can shut up and stand still, but sometimes we got to fight back. We doing a lot of praying, but we ain't acting on them prayers. If the devil step on my toe, then we got to make up in our mind that we're going to stomp on his head. Because what he's trying to do is cause us to slip. He wants you to look at your situation. He wants you to see what you're going through. He wants you to walk by your feeling and feel like, oh, this ain't going to change. It ain't going to work out. But I need somebody in here to help me to shout out that God is still God. And God is still in control. Oh, when we get the hold to that and know that God don't change, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, he's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still setting people free. He's still touching the mind. He's still delivering from habits and vices and stuff that people think they can't let go of. Can somebody say that God is still God? And God is still in control. Oh, I can't let that slip because it's the truth. Said I preach up in here. Oh, I got to get another grip. And God is still God. The Bible says that we have to take heed to the things that we have heard. And Paul telling these people, he's basically telling them in simple terms that Although it's a lot of stuff that's being presented to you, you know the truth. You know the truth. And in the time that we're living in today, it's a whole bunch of noise coming our way. If you look at the news, Trump want to get us caught up in all that and what they got going on. The doctors want us to get caught up in what they saying. The banks want us to get caught up in what they saying. The educational system want us to get caught up in what they saying. But today, God sent me to encourage us as the people of God that we better get a grip on what he trying to say. Because if we get a grip on what he's saying, then he control everything else. Yeah. We can't do nothing about what these folks doing anyway. So why are we keeping ourselves up about the president? Why are we keeping ourselves up about the bank? Why are we keeping ourselves up about the doctors, the lawyers, and all of these other people? What we can control is that what we do. Am I saved for real? Am I doing my part? Do I have a grip on what God is saying? There's a lot of different things being taught, preached, and sung about in the church world. What we have to remember is that what we hear, we can't unhear. In Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What does that mean to us? That means that we heard the word, we studied the word, and our faith was strengthened by the word. And as we hear the word of God, and we take God at his word by faith, our faith begins to get stronger and stronger. Reading God's word, studying God's word, hearing God's word, living God's word. These are things that saints should want to do. 
So God sent me with a word, and if you got an ear to hear, you can leave today with strength. You can leave today with power. You can leave today renewed, refreshed, with a sound mind. Because Psalm 119, 105, the word says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the word is what we need to help us to navigate through this life. Word to give us direction. And reveal to us what God wants us to see. Tells us why we need to take heed to what we hear. Take heed to what's going on around us. Because the Bible then goes on to say, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now what does it mean to slip? To slip, that means to to slide unintentionally. It means you done lost your balance. You done lost your footing. And the problem with the church now is everybody want to act like we all walking straight all the time. But you got to remember a slip ain't, you ain't trying, you ain't waking up in the morning and say I'm going to slip today. A slip is unexpected. Can I preach up in here? And can I tell you sometimes I slip. But God says it's time for you to get a grip. Can I preach up in here? And God sent me to tell you this morning, yeah, you made a slip, but God gave you a chance today where you can get another grip. Get another grip on him. It also means, it also means to slip. That means you didn't lower it yourself. You didn't found yourself to a lower level or a lower standard. And a slip ain't intentional, but it's unexpected. You ain't expecting the slip. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, it says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, and lest he fall. In the store, when you go in the grocery store, they may see a, you might see a wet flow sign and that uh, is a warning that this area may be slippery. So what you do, you avoid that area by going around it. And so the word tells us that we got to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So when you go in the store, you see a warning. If you choose to go in that area, then you choose in the slip. Can I preach up in here? When you go on to Hebrews 2 and that ver third verse, the word says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Paul is talking about the word of God that came through the men of God. He's saying if we don't take hold of the help that God has given us, then you don't want to be helped. We can't be helped. And all that we need is in the word of God. I need somebody to tell the devil that it's in the word of God. Whatever I need is in the word of God. In Psalm 107 and 20 it says that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Can I preach up in here this morning? That Psalm says that he delivers them from their destruction. And the only way you can be delivered from your destruction is if you lay hold on the word of God. Is that you get a grip on the word of God. Say yes to God. But we can't afford to let it slip. And another way we can look at the word slip is when you don't have a firm grip on something. When you don't have a grip on something, it may slip through your hands. It may slip right through your fingers. Or it could easily be snatched away from you. And I'm here to encourage all of the people of God that the devil is trying to snatch that word from you. He's trying to steal your faith. He wants us to let it slip away from us. But you got to tell yourself to get a grip. It won't always be like this because God has made us promises in the word of God and everything that he's promised he's able to fulfill it he's able to bring it to pass say yes to God
uh, and we don't let people uh, take stuff that we care about. Uh, can I preach up in here? When y'all left the house this morning, uh, you made sure that thing was locked down. Uh, you checked the doors. Then I preach up in here. Made sure you looked at the window. Uh, made sure you was going to be comfortable when you got back. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, you ain't going to let nobody break in. Uh, you did all you could uh, to protect your house. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, so I'm here to ask you this morning, uh, why is it so easy uh, for the devil to shake us? Uh, why is it so easy uh, for us to lose our faith, uh, for us to lose our focus? Uh, it's because we don't have a firm grip on God. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, I never imagined uh, where I would be in a time now uh, where it seemed like the world uh, is more solid than the church. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, they have a street code. Uh, and they believe in that code. They'll live by that code. We'll die by that code. Can I preach up in here? But when it comes to the church now, it seems like we go with what's popular now. Whatever the world want, whatever the people want, then I'll go that way. But not so. Can I preach up in here? God wants us to get a grip. Get a grip on the word of God. Uh, say yes to God uh, and we can't let the devil uh, cause us to doubt this word uh, say yes to God uh, he want us to doubt God uh, can I preach up in here uh, like this word ain't living uh, like this word ain't true uh, like this word can't change you uh, say yes to God uh, say yes to God uh, and God wants to us to be strong in him huh? because Satan wants to steal the word from our heart huh? because he know what it will produce in us huh? say yes to God we have to put more value on the word. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, if we don't put more value on the word of God, uh, then we going to let the word slip. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, uh, again it says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth uh, take heed lest he fall. Uh, and so what the word is trying to tell us today uh, is that a slip uh, is going to be followed by a fall. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, you might have lost your balance, uh, but when you lose your balance. Uh, it's easy to get tipped on over. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, somebody ought to tell yourself I'm not going to slip no more. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, now I got my guard up. Uh, can I preach up in here? Some of us done went through life uh, slipping and sliding. Uh, being tossed to and fro but you ought to make up your mind that I'm coming out of this and I'm not going to slip no more that I'm going to turn my mind over to God I'm going to turn my life over to God say yes to God yes Lord and I'm going to grip, get a grip on him come on and give God a praise in this place Yes, Lord, uh, in salvation, uh, it don't keep us from being tempted, y'all. Uh, salvation uh, don't keep you from being attacked from the devil. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, everybody in this room uh, going to be tempted. Uh, everybody in this room uh, going to have to fight the devil. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and whether you want to admit it or not, uh, we all have that one area uh, where the devil know he can catch you slipping. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, so that's why you better make sure huh, after you get through praising huh, that you better have a grip on God huh, after you get through singing huh, you better make sure you have a grip because after we get through praising huh, the devil is waiting on us huh, say yes to God huh, and he knows how to tempt you huh, he knows how to knock you off huh, say yes to God huh, because what you forget is huh, that you spent a little time with him huh, say yes to God huh, he was your dance partner at one time say yes to God he knew who you like to listen to he knew what got you in the mood he knows your favorite drink and he knows your favorite drug he know what kind of woman you like he know what kind of man you like can I preach up in here yes Lord but you ought to tell that devil that I don't live there no more I'm delivered and I got a grip on God say yes Say yes to God.
And when you get a grip on God, you'll realize that I got too much to lose now. Say yes to God. I got too much to give up. If I go ahead and slip, I can't be slipping. Say yes to God. The Hebrews 2 and 4, the Bible says that God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gift of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Jude 1 and 24, the word says, now unto him that is able uh, to keep you from falling uh, and to present you faultless uh, before the presence of his glory uh, with exceeding joy. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, if we keep the word close, uh, then we'll find out that he'll never leave us, uh, that he won't forsake us. Uh, somebody say, it's in the word. Uh, it's in the word. It's in the word. Uh, the word will keep us from falling, uh, falling into sin, uh, falling into depression, uh, falling into pride, uh, falling into fear, uh, falling into laziness, uh, falling into jealousy, uh, falling into shame, uh, falling into guilt. Uh, there's freedom in the word. Uh, Somebody today, I don't want to be free. Want to be free. I'm tired of going through the motions. I'm say yes to God. I'm tired of fighting the devil on my own. I'm God's telling you to get a grip. I'm get a grip on him. I'm Say yes to God. Somebody shout, it's in the word. Say yes to God. So we can't let it slip. And I've been preaching and saying, let it slip. But John 1 and 1, through that fourth verse, it says, in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and in him was life and the life was the light of men say yes to God in the beginning was the word that means the word it always existed. The word always has been. The word always will be. Before there was anything else, there was a word. Before you had a problem, there was a word. Before the doctor had a report, there was a word. Say yes to God. Before my trials came, there was a word. Say yes to God. Before the devil started attacking my family, there was a word. Word. Say yes to God. And that word has a name. And his name is Jesus. Say yes to God. Somebody ought to shout his name. Jesus. Jesus. The word is who Jesus is. Jesus is everything that God has ever said. Jesus is everything that God would ever will say. Because it says in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Say yes to God. So I'm here to encourage you this morning. Today if you have slipped, oh let the word, or you let the word slip. It's time to pick yourself up huh? and pick this word back up. Huh? Come on and choose Jesus. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? I'm sent to remind you huh? that your protection huh? is in the word. Huh? Your peace huh? is in the word. Huh? Your healing huh? is in the word. Huh? Deliverance huh? is in the word. Huh? Freedom huh? is in the word. Huh? I can't let it slip. Huh? Come on and declare that with me. I can't let it slip. Come on and put your hands together and give God a praise in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So we have to make up in our mind that it's time to fight the devil back. Say yes to God. We can't sit on the sideline and just let them snatch stuff. Snatch stuff from us. If you know what the word say, then it's time to stand on that word. Say yes to God.
lay hold on the word of God and every promise that he's given us say yes to God it may not look like it say yes to God but we walk by faith and not by sight say yes to God it ain't always going to look good. Ain't always going to feel good. But keep on holding on. Say yes to God. Don't be distracted by the noise. Don't give in to the devil. Say yes to God. But you got to be determined that I'm not going to let it slip. Say yes to God. You got to have the faith like they testified today. They not out the bed yet. But I may not see it, but I know it's getting ready to happen. Say yes to God. They might not be saved yet, but you got to be determined that it's getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to save them. God's getting ready to turn it around. Say yes to God. It's my job to hold that grip. Say yes to God. Get a grip on God. Get a grip on your faith. Say yes yes to God and God will say yes to God he'll show up for you yes Lord he'll show up and make a difference say yes to God come on and put your hands together and give God the best praise you can give him right now hallelujah everyone standing hallelujah everyone's mind on God